Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Uh, thank you all for coming out today to our first or our inaugural pilot, if you will, uh, quarterly share presentation. Uh, today we will be talking with you about business, uh, land development, and just the uh, economy of Pearland over the past quarter. So um, thank you again for coming out. We have two main goals for our uh, event today. One is uh, dissemination of information. Every few months, um, every department around the city compiles our numbers and our activities, and we put them in reports, and we send them over to our city manager, and we post them on the website. But uh, we know from the click counts that everyone doesn't necessarily open those reports and read 50-page documents in their leisure. So one of our goals with this event is to uh, package this information in a different format and get it out to our citizenry and our development community. So we are glad that you're here today for our first event. And our other goal for this this morning is just to make ourselves more accessible. We are always available to you, uh, but we don't want to just be available when there's issues or concerns. We want to build relationships with our community. So if there's a face here that you haven't seen before, make sure you reach out and shake a hand and exchange a business card, and then we will uh, make sure we expand our network today. So for our agenda, we have several uh, good speakers and some good information lined up for you today. Uh, myself, I will be starting out talking about our community development department and what we've been up to in the last quarter. Um, I will be followed by John McCarter in our finance department, followed by Brian Malone with the Pearland Economic Development Corporation, and then Donna Connolly from the Chamber of Commerce. And then for our highlight uh, presenter today, we will have our very own uh, parks uh, projects department to speak about the McCard Road project. So uh, every quarter at this event, we will pick some um, interesting project, be it a city municipal project or a private uh, project that's bringing in a lot of jobs to talk about and highlight and get that information out to the community. So uh, this time it will be our projects department. Um, please hold all questions till the end. We will make sure we have some time um, at the end for questions. And if you would like to follow along with the slides or send this information to someone, please look at the website link at the bottom of your agenda to find out where you can find the slides from today's presentation. All right. And without further ado, go ahead and get into the information. So again, I'll be talking about the community development department. We handle uh, permits, zone cases, and uh, a lot of things related to that. So here are our, our numbers at a glance in terms of uh, total construction valuation. Uh, we are up versus uh, the last quarter, as well as uh, third quarter last year. In terms of uh, commercial construction valuation, we are down from last quarter, but up from this time last year. Building permit revenue is up in both categories. Pre-development numbers are higher than last quarter, a uh, little lower than last year this time. Zoning cases are equal or higher than uh, last year. Conditional use permits, we had an increase from last quarter, but are down from this time last year. And then for plats, we are down in both areas and are variances for the Planning and Zoning Commission as well as the Zoning Board of Adjustments are both higher than uh, last quarter and this time last year. So a little more detail about some of those numbers. A commercial plan turnaround. Um, last quarter we saw 48 commercial plans submitted. So uh, this category includes new construction, so brand new buildings as well as additions to buildings, alterations or interior uh, finishes, site work as well as shell buildings for uh, speculative development. 64% um, of those plans were reviewed and approved in two submissions. We're proud of those numbers, so about two-thirds of, of the plans submitted, we got them in and out uh, very quickly. Um, about 17 of those, uh, I'm sorry, exactly 17 of those applications took three or more submittals. So this is our, uh, our area for improvement. We want to make sure that uh, plan sets and uh, permit applications flow through our system quickly. Um, so in that area, we focus on with various services we offer in the department to make sure those numbers uh, go down every time we uh, create our report. Um, a little more detail about commercial submittals. There were nine submitted for new con commercial buildings um, for a total of 214,000 square feet. Um, six of those projects were valued at over $1 million. And to highlight a couple of the high profile ones, we have the Lake Park Office Building off of Cullen Parkway. That's the new mixed use uh, development we have near Cullen. Uh, Indris Hauser, which you'll hear more about later in the uh, agenda, uh, came in for $17 million. And then the Lower Kirby District Ivy Pond, uh, the amenity pond for that development came in for $3 million. Um, so some uh, interesting projects going on. Um, aside from those, we had 21 permits for additions alterations, 16 for tenant finish outs, two for site work. Um, the total for all the commercial work was $50 million. Uh, on the residential side, there were 177 single family home permits uh, that were submitted. 
This is uh, 100, over 100 permits less than we had at this time uh, last year um, in the third quarter. Um, you can see from uh, the graph here that every year um, since 15, our, our numbers of residential uh, home starts um, gets lower and lower kind of at the same rate. The, the, the number of them is at the same angle just about every time, but you know, as land uh, kind of diminishes, those larger uh, residential projects, they diminish as well. So we're still humming, we still have a, a lot of development going on, but we are not at the numbers we were putting up in uh, 2014 and 15. Um, in terms of the workload, uh, there were 563 plan reviews uh, conducted, 8,764 construction site inspections were made, 861 permit applications total were assessed, and then 8,273 phone calls on our main line, and 111 public information requests were processed in the department. So if anyone ever tells you community development doesn't work hard, make sure you show them these numbers. Um, so from our zoning division, our planning division, I'm sorry, uh, five zone change requests were reviewed. Our average is about four per quarter, so we were a little bit up from the average. They were uh, two zone changes from residential to mixed use in the Lower Kirby District. Um, one was for uh, residential to R4 um, near McKeever for uh, roughly 80 acres. And then there were two planned development zoning packages that were updated, and then there was one new submittal for a new plan development uh, near Paraland Parkway. Conditional use permits, these are permits for uses that are sometimes allowed in certain zoning districts, but they need additional consideration by council just to make sure um, no additional conditions on that site need to be uh, put in place for them to play well with their neighbors. So for conditional use permits, there were five that were looked at, um, four approved, um, one for a new duplex in the Old Town site area, a new music school in the BP288 district, a micro distillery, as well as a U-Haul facility. Um, in terms of plats, we had 17 in the third quarter. Um, this is a, a drop from uh, the second quarter, as well as from this time last year. So uh, plats can fluctuate in terms of the numbers. So we are lower than previously, but a lot of the plats that we got in were preliminary plats, meaning that the final plats will come in soon, which will bring in a, a lot of lots. But with those 17, it created 253 new buildable lots. And for our variances, we had six P and Z variances reviewed, as well as four Zoning Board of Adjustment variances. So the third division in community development is development services. This is a new division, um, which I lead for the department. Um, you can see this uh, good looking team here. Uh, we are here to serve you all, essentially. So what we did was rearrange some existing services uh, that the department offers and created some new services. So we kind of removed this group from the regulatory portion of what the city does so we can focus on the customer service experience. So what we focus on is the intake of construction permits, coordinating the review of construction permits, and oversight of the disbursement or distribution of those permits once they are approved. Uh, so we focus on, on that uh, experience and we focus on the efficiency of the process and making improvements where we see fit. And if you ever have any issues as you go through that process, we are here to make sure uh, we are available and we can fix any problems as they arise so we can keep those numbers low in terms of the number of uh, resubmittals. So some of the services we offer in development services are pre-development meetings. We've been offering them for some time. Uh, the past quarter, we hosted 14 of them. We also hosted or coordinated six pre-construction meetings for projects before they uh, broke ground, and then 13 project consultation meetings. This is a new service we offer. So if you're not quite ready for a pre-development meeting, meaning you don't have a site plan yet, you're not too much into the details of what you want to do, but you want some general information on what you can do at a certain property, what's the zoning, and uh, what are the possibilities here, we have kind of a, a desk side chat with you, um, with someone from planning and, and our team to uh, give you a, a quick consultation so you can be more informed as you move forward on your decision making. Um, we hosted 13 of those the past quarter. And then we had 10 uh, DRC or development review committee meetings. The DRC meetings are internal only. So our entire permit review team comes together, 
looks at all the permits that have been submitted, all of the plats and zone cases, everything that comes through uh, the process and make sure we're all on one accord in terms of city reviews and comments. If there are some uh, major conflicts that come up with a project, we make sure we're on top of that as much as we can be so that there's a unified message coming uh, out of the city to the applicants. Um, Ten of those DRC committee meetings were held in the last quarter. Uh, about a month ago, June 18th, at the West Side Event Center, we held our annual Pearland Development Forum. This is an informational session that we hold once a year to update the development community on any changes in our ordinances, codes, or policies that have taken place or will take place soon um, that affect the development process. Um, so we heard from the, our building official, fire marshal's office, engineering, just about every department involved in the development review process. Um, and some of those updates included the website tools that we have updated and that are new. Uh, some fee changes and new staff was also introduced. And then finally, in the uh, spirit of collaboration, uh, on April 30th, we members of the city staff joined the Pearland Chamber of Commerce to travel to the DFW area, and we visited several municipalities up there uh, for a information exchange. We visited with the city of Grapevine, the city of Frisco, as well as the city of Addison, um, talked about several things. Uh, one of the ideas that came out of that visit is this actual event you're at right now. So there are some fruits, no pun, already coming uh, from that visit. So um, thank you for uh, your attention, and I will now turn over the floor to Mr. McCarter from Finance. Thank you, Clarence, and good morning, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, appreciate the opportunity to share today. Uh, this is a really cool event. So. Um, it's good to get from uh, behind the computer here to, to share a little bit today. My name is John McCarter, Assistant Finance Director with the City of Pearland. Um, so I'm just going to cover some highlights of what's going on in the Finance Department, what's going on uh, with the City's finances in general. Um, probably the best place to start is, is what the Finance Department actually does. Uh, usually when we're doing our job well, you don't even know we're here. Um, we have kind of three areas of focus. Um, on the left-hand side here is kind of my uh, area of expertise, if you will. Uh, that's budget research and strategic planning, uh, purchase and contract administration. So if you're doing business with the city, you're going to interact uh, a little bit with our finance department. Uh, financial planning, looking out at the multi-year plan. We do a three-year multi-plan every year as a part of our budget. Um, water and sewer rate model, uh, that's a big deal as a part of our budget, which is due in two weeks, two weeks from today. Um, so that's what you guys are paying on your water bills. Uh, capital financing with our CIP programming. Um, we work on debt issuances and the like. Um, Property taxation, that's our largest revenue source coming through uh, that uh, are paid annually. Um, on the right-hand side, Rhonda Doherty, our other assistant finance director here, handles our accounting uh, side that's auditing, financial reporting, the annual CAFR that comes up, treasury management, that's all of our money, making investments and, and trying to make some money off of that. Uh, the debt management, our issuance of bonds, we'll talk about a little later in the presentation, uh, as well as financial transparency, which you can find on our website. Uh, we'll have that link a little bit later as well. Uh, the annual audit and internal controls. Um, and then lastly, utility billing. That's the water and the garbage billing that go out monthly. I'm sure you're very familiar with that as well. Um, so kind of what's new in the finance department and what's new with the city. Obviously, the big thing was in May, we approved a bond package. Voters approved. We didn't approve it. Voters approved it. Uh, that was $79 million over the course of the next five to six years. Lots of excellent stuff going on in there. Uh, we actually already have some uh, design contracts that went through last month. Uh, to get those projects rolling and to get those improvements out into the city. So we're really excited about that. Um, we just passed our second budget amendment in June. Uh, that's our mid-year allocation. Uh, there were some cars and some other good stuff. Um, most notably, we did allocate an extra $200,000 for streets and sidewalk repairs. Uh, as we go into the summer months, that's kind of the heavy, um, heavy season for those guys. So you should be seeing some of those improvements out, hopefully, uh, in the neighborhoods that you're, you're in, doing business in. Um, and then lastly, the sale of debt in July, uh, we actually just got our rating from Fitch, um, affirmed our AA, which is strong for us, and we're really excited about that. Uh, Moody's should be out today or tomorrow, um, but that, that, that was approved by council to, again, keep that capital investment going, uh, keep the money flowing for us to, uh, to keep doing the good work we are doing. Um, so what's coming up next for us? Uh, the capital improvement plan, our director of capital projects and engineering, Robert Upton, uh, we'll be presenting the capital improvement plan uh, on Monday at City Council. Um, that used to be a part of our budget. We kind of peeled it out, so we got a little bit more discussion time this year. Uh, that is a regularly scheduled City Council meeting, so 
you guys can show up and give comments on that. Uh, that's a big deal, five-year plan, uh, many millions of dollars there, an important document. Um, budget workshop number one, on uh, Saturday, August 10th at 8.30 a.m. right here in City Council Chambers. Uh, that will be the presentation of the budget. Uh, two weeks from today, we will post that on our website, and it will be at both libraries as well if you want a hard copy. Um, that will have the tax rate in it, the water rates, all that good stuff, um, our annual spending plan. Um, I'm sure some of you are wondering, we don't know what the tax rate's going to be yet. We should know by the end of July, right before we set that budget out. Same thing with the water rates. Um, so sorry to disappoint, but you got to wait two weeks for that. Um, and then lastly, on the purchasing side, uh, we do have the Shop Pearland monthly meeting Again, right here, August 13th, I believe that's a Tuesday. Uh, we will be presenting and doing kind of a deep dive. So if you're wondering about how you can do business with the city, uh, that's going to be a great opportunity to connect uh, with us uh, and go a little bit deeper uh, into to how you can get connected. Lastly, um, how, how can you find out about what's going on other than attending these quarterly meetings? Um, first and foremost, visit our website, parallelantx.gov. That's got all the good information on it uh, from all of our divisions. Um, if you're looking to do business with the city, ebids at parallelantx.gov is how you can reach out to us directly. Um, if you do one thing leaving today, I recommend going to pearland.ionwave.net. That is our ebid system. You can get signed up for alerts. Uh, so if you're in cleaning supplies, you can get notified every time we come up for bid for that service. Uh, that's a great way to stay in the loop. Uh, we also have hard copies of our vendor guide here today in the back. Um, that has information on historically underutilized businesses, um, getting um, benefits for local uh, bidders, all that good stuff. That's all in that vendor guide. It's a great document. You can take one with you. Um, and then lastly, uh, the budget obviously coming up, uh, parallelantx.gov slash FY20 budget. Uh, we'll have all the information posted up there. There's already some planning documents and the like. So if you want to read all about our, uh, our planning stuff that we held back in February, you can do it right there. Um, you can always reach out to us directly, either across the, the way here or via email. Uh, again, really appreciate the time today. I think I'm going to hand it over to Brian Malone. Separate PowerPoint, right? There you go. Thank you all for your time. And while I'm up, I want to recognize uh, Representative Ed Thompson for joining us today. Thank you for coming out. Good morning. My, as uh, Clarence said, I'm Brian Malone. I'm Vice President for the Paraland Economic Development Corporation. And we really do appreciate you guys coming out. We know you're taking time away from your business and the things that really matter to you. So we appreciate you taking this opportunity to come and learn a little bit of what's happening in the city, uh, the chamber, and so that you're better informed in that regard. Uh, the Paraland Economic Development Corporation um, Finally got it to work. Uh, this, this is really what I want to present to you a little bit today, is a little bit of background on the Economic Development Corporation, what we do, uh, how we are created, and then really get into the, some items within our strategic plan. The Pearland st Strategic Plan, 2020 plan, was created many years ago, and the corporation has been following that. And we're going to look at uh, some corridors and then also the economic development marketing because those are a couple things that are very active projects that we continue to work on in that regard. The uh, corporation was created uh, back in uh, 1995 by a vote of the citizens of Pearland, uh, and that essentially dedicated a half cent of your sales tax for economic development purposes. Uh, we are very similar to follow all the rules and regulations essentially that the city of Pearland does when it comes to open meetings, open laws. Uh, our budget, our board are all approved and appointed by uh, the uh, city council of Pearland, so uh, very integrated with the city in that regard. Uh, we have a seven-member seven board, uh, and I'll show you those folks here in a minute, a staff of six people that deal with all the day-to-day -day operations. But our main focus is, as you can see there, are going to be dealing with business attraction, retention, and marketing, transportation, and mobility, which is highly critical here in Pearland. 
Lower Kirby Urban Center, which is one of our main development areas, and then corridors and beautification. That is our board. Uh, they do a great job to dedicate a lot of time to the activities of uh, the corporation and what we're doing uh, in that regard. The, as I mentioned, the Paralands 2020 strategic plan is something that is an ongoing uh, document. We are actually now in the process of updating and doing, doing a new plan, but this is still the plan that we will operate on probably with, uh, for the next year or so. And as you can see there, there's nine different uh, activities that we focus on, broad activities. And, and during today's presentation, I'm going to focus on uh, one, three, and five, just to kind of give you a little bit of overview of a couple of those uh, in that regard. One of the main uh, strategies that was outlined in, in the 2020 plan was to look at optimizing development within specific commercial corridors. Uh, a redevelopment strategy, strategy was, was created uh, for the State Highway 35 corridor. And that's really the one of the ones that we're going to look at this morning. Uh, that plan had big, big picture ideas on how we can do that, how we can actually look at how do we get commercial development to reinvigorate that area. Highway 35 obviously is the, one of the old heartland roads through Perryland, and it's changed over the years. And, you know, so uh, in some parts of it have it, so we need to look at how we can do that. One of the initial things was to look at uh, what we call the Northern Corridor. And that is essentially from Beltway 8 all the way to Broadway. Uh, TxDOT did a major renovation of that street many years ago. Not many years, but a few years ago. Uh, and one of the things that uh, after we really looked at it, it did not, the street is great, but it was not dressed up really well. So we began to look at a process of how can we make that entryway more inviting to the citizens, more inviting to sit to businesses so that they recognize that this is a good place to do. So it really became a process of looking at that, identifying what we could do in terms of that. Uh, and, you know, and this slide talks about looking at putting in trees and plantings. Uh, one of the things that we did a lot of recently is doing some monument signs, entry signs, so that people know when they enter into Pearland. A uh, couple of these signs obviously have been uh, under construction. Uh, we have one under construction right now at Friendswood and uh, down on the south end uh, of Broadway. But on uh, 35, we have two that we're putting in right at the Beltway uh, so that people know that when they're entering Pearland, we think that's important to create that quality of place uh, whenever we're doing something. So you can kind of have an idea of what the scale of those are, but. Uh, Whenever we started this project, this is really what we were dealing with on Highway 35. It really was not what you would say conducive to a, a good appeal. It was a good curb appeal, right, when you get right down to it. Uh, you had a project that needed a lot of dressing up. And so with that, we created a plan uh, working with citizens and developing what should be done. This is the initial way that they thought it would look at at the Beltway and where the, one of the monuments would go. And then when you look at uh, the corners, uh, you can tell what the architect's vision was is to really change those, to soften them so that you, know, that you don't have just a hardscape, but you have some landscaping there that dresses it up. And then the bottom picture there, you can see where they're adding the trees in the middles of the medians, you know, adding trees and decorative uh, flowering trees along the sides of the road. That is a picture that was taken yesterday uh, of the, uh, one of the monument signs at Beltway 8 and 35. It's changing dramatically. I, you know, I encourage you to drive down that road and look at it, look at the changes, and think about what used to be there. Uh, this is where we've added some street trees uh, up and down the corridor. And this is just one of the corner intersections. So it's really going to look much better in terms of a physical product in that regard. The other thing is when we looked at doing these corridors, we actually said, what is it going to take for people to reinvest in this area? Uh, we have a lot of parcels, a lot of good land, but they've gone silent for a long time. They just sit there, and, and for whatever reason. So one of the things that we looked at is 
those, these other catalyst areas, how do we reinvigorate those? And one of the ones that we have been working on probably for about five years is what we call catalyst number two, which is in an area called the Business Park North. This is an area that encompasses the old rice dryer area and then land that is adjacent to the Airland ISD uh, administration building. This is about an 18-acre project uh, that has been sitting there for a long time. Uh, so the EDC, working with four commercial development, began working on a project on that. And as you can see, things are actually happening. Phase one, which was to create a detention project, has happened. Uh, that is built and in, uh, in the ground, ready to go. Uh, the other thing that you can see there is we have a little thing that says ERS CAT. Clarence talked about ERS CAT a minute ago. That's a $4 million project. And then or commercial, the, in the orange part, We'll actually have some additional uh, buildings that they're going to put up. Next phase is we're going to rebuild Rice Dryer Road. Uh, that'll be a multi-million dollar contract. Then eventually we'll get up to Halleck. But that's how we're going to identify and readdress these corridors. This is what our commercials building will look like. Uh, they are designing that currently. Then CAT, uh, they are actually under construction. They're doing a 40,000 square foot facility. Uh, it's going to be a great facility, a great ad in terms of tax base. They do emergency rental generators, uh, so it's going to be the $4 million in construction will be ballooned by the uh, value and the uh, equipment that they have. The other thing, obviously, that we tend to a lot is the economic development marketing. That's really uh, one of the things that people are always interested in, what's going on in terms of projects. This is actually a picture of a groundbreaking for Indris Hauser. Uh, which is doing a project on uh, Kirby Drive and uh, Beltway 8. Uh, Indris Hauser is doing a consolidation and creating a, what they call their Gulf Coast Regional Facility here in Pearland. Uh, they're going to build 100,000 square feet, have about 110 people in this facility. They bought 17 acres, so they have a vision of creating a campus-type environment where they will eventually add additional buildings uh, for that facility. So. Uh, it's going to be a great project. It's, it's a signature project when you look at that corner. This is a picture from yesterday also. So uh, active construction site. If you go up and down the Kirby, uh, Lower Kirby Drive, uh, it's a phenomenal success that we've had there. And that's part of uh, utilizing those 4B sales tax dollars. That's eventually what the facility will look like. The other thing that we do in a partnership with is a BizConnect program with the Pearland Chamber of Commerce. That is really an important part of what we do every day, uh, working with our existing industries to make sure that they're happy, that they're growing, and, and finding out issues about that. Carol uh, Butek, Arts Butek and I make calls on those businesses to find out what their issues are, then seeing how we can help them. Uh, you know, sometimes there are issues, sometimes there's not, but we need to know uh, is apparently in what's happening there in that regard. But it's a great partnership, and I think uh, the Chamber took the lead on going up to a Grapevine. And so, I mean, you know, it's a partnership. All of the, everything that we do, I think, is a partnership in that regard. So that's just a few of the things that we're doing. So I do have a little flyer if you're interested about our goals and stuff, a little update. So I'd be happy to give those to you. I'll let you switch it out. All right, and then next we will hear from Donna Connolly from the Pearland Chamber of Commerce. Hello, everybody. I'm Donna. I am the 2019 Chairman of the Board for the Pearland Chamber. I'm honored to be that. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of work, but it's good work. Um, and for to start, I would like to just give you a little bit of history for this first meeting so that you know more about the Chamber. Um, so. The chamber was organized in 63, um, and it was three professionals who wanted to start a chamber, and there wasn't a whole lot of interest. The business community looked quite different then as it does today. Uh, but some of their early accomplishments was trash, trash pickup and then some signage for Pearland. It wasn't nearly as, as beautiful, I don't imagine, as what we have uh, through the PEDC, but those were some of the early things that they did for us. In 95, the Chamber initiated a local option 
uh, to approve a half cent sales tax for economic development which um, actually did start up uh, the PEDC, the Paraland Economic Development Court, which has done some fine work. Um, and I'm very impressed with what I've seen in so many, it just seems a few years that they've accomplished so much. So that, uh, again, uh, as Brian mentioned, with the BizConnect programs and other things that the Chamber and PEDC partners with, that certainly does help uh, attract and retain new businesses. In 2006, the Chamber partnered with the city to take on tourism duties and also um, assist local accommodation businesses as well as some popular sports programs. And this partnership continued until the development of the Paraline Convention and Visitors Bureau in 2012. So as you can see, again, uh, like Brian said, the Chamber and the city, the PDC has a long-lasting mutually beneficial relationship that continued to advance uh, our great city. A few more meaningful moments that happened in 2007, I'll just touch on those briefly. Uh, we met with TxDOT asking them to add overhead signage uh, to I-45, 610, and 59 so that people would know when they were coming into Paraland and where to exit. Well, they wouldn't do the overhead like they had for Lake Jackson and Freeport, but they did add some signage to the right-hand side, so of course that was very helpful. Also in 2007, our president, pa uh, Carol Arts Buchek, reached out to HEB where she had read um, that they were going to put 10,000 square feet of fine wines to be sold in their HEB Plus store in Pearland. Well, she wanted to make sure they knew that they might run into a barrier. Who here remembers when you had to have a membership in the restaurants to buy a beer? Okay, so that's what this is all tied to. And so HEB, as well as some of the chamber membership, others, and um, they joined forces. And uh, they went out and initiated the local option, which passed by 73%, which HEB was happy to celebrate in Christmas of that same year. Today we have a lot of uh, programs that I'm very excited about and some committees that are very helpful to our business community. For example, we have the 518 Ad Hoc Committee that is informing some of the businesses along 518, specifically between Cullen and 35, on the expansion planned by TxDOT, which of course we're certainly in agreement that we need to help our traffic congestion and um, grow and widen so that we can get where we need to be. Uh, but we do hope to partner with TxDOT and look at those plans again so that it has a minimal, um, I guess as minimal effect on those businesses as possible. So there is a meeting uh, coming up July 31st uh, starting at 6 p.m., and that will be held at Clayton Funeral Home. Uh, they are just one of the businesses that are going to be affected by that widening. So if you want to be informed about that, please join that meeting. Uh, we'll have some flyers as well if you'd like to, to learn more about that. Now, one of our very young programs that's in development is an incubator, a new business startup facility that we're looking at. And Clarence mentioned that we went to Grapevine, as did Brian, and we learned a lot. We went to Addison Incubator. Um, basically, it is a building where new business startups, entrepreneurs can go at a very low cost and low overhead and also get some guidance in starting up their new company. So we saw a lot of um, very exciting things coming out of that facility in Addison. And then a week or so ago, we had some um, city reps and then also chamber reps go to the Cannon in Houston. They did a tour there, learned even more, and they too are a very successful incubator. And we have continued talks with them to see how we might have an arm of the cannon in Pearland um, to focus more on potentially biomedical and technology startups. So we don't think we need to recreate the wheel on that. They're doing a very good job, so more to come on that one. Now, our second initiative, uh, which actually came from a survey we had a few years ago, we found that a lot of the larger companies, and also small and mid-size, their biggest um, barrier to continuing to grow and thrive was finding skilled workforce and educated workforce. So we developed the Workforce Development Committee, which has turned into one of our active energetic committees, where we are getting um, some presentations by the larger companies, where they're giving us 
virtual tours of their spaces. They're talking about the types of employees they need, the type of education and skilled labor training. And the higher education and other associations that deal in development of skilled labor are listening and they are actually planning their training around that. Um, so there, it's, it's been very exciting to see that. We haven't been able to engage the larger companies as much as we are with the Workforce Development Committee. So look for more on that. And then finally, I'm very excited to announce that our leadership class of 2019 has actually submitted their paperwork for a 501c3 formation um, to help with workforce development in that they hope to give grants and other money and donate that to the educational arms and those that train skilled labor. So we have some information again on the 518 widening, the leadership pair land, and if you would like to be involved in that as well as the Alvin Community College Job Fair, which we hope that helps in work develop, workforce development as well. So thank you so much. Take a look at our website, see how you beca can become more involved. Okay. Thank you very much. So finally, we will have our highlight speaker today. Again, we will have uh, Jennifer Lee coming up from our projects department to talk about McCard Road. In just a moment. All right, Jennifer. Thank you, Clarence. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Lee. I'm one of the senior project managers uh, in the Capital Projects Group here at the City of Pearland. And I'm excited to be able to share some information about the McCard Road Project with you. The McCard Road Extension is basically, this project is basically, um, sorry about that, um, a connect the dots pro project. In other words, we already have a part of the corridor in place and this project will uh, connect the two existing pieces that we have. Currently, McCart Road, which is also called uh, FM 2234, and Shadow Creek Parkway uh, extends from FM 521, which is uh, Almeda Road, to just east of Cullen. And then the, the, it terminates just at um, Stone Road. And then there's another segment that starts at McCower Road and extends to Pearland Parkway. This um, new segment will, be will fall between the existing Stone Road and Macau Road. The project is approximately three and a half miles, uh, and it consists of a four-lane concrete curb and gutter divided median, raised median roadway uh, that has landscaping, uh, street lights, Underground drainage detention. There will be five traffic signals added along the corridor. Um, and some of the amenities include, uh, as I said, street lighting, uh, but uh, primarily the shared use path. The shared use path is a 10 foot wide sidewalk that can be used by not just walkers, but uh, bicyclists, skaters, skateboards, strollers, dogs, you name it. It's to, to, in order to uh, get people moving uh, within that corridor. Um, in addition to the roadway, we will also include 38,000 linear feet of fiber. This fiber will connect all of the traffic signals along that corridor, as well as uh, interconnect with the existing uh, traffic signals throughout the city. It forms a loop throughout the city for all of the traffic signals. And a precursor to the project includes uh, gravity, sewer line from Cullen to Garden, and a water line uh, that will extend from Cullen to Macau Road. Uh, the project, as I said, is, is a three and a half mile section um, that will complete that east-west thoroughfare uh, as an alternative to FM 518. Uh, several of the speakers have already talked, kind of, you know, hint on uh, mobility being uh, an important factor for our city and alleviating some of the congestion that we're experiencing. So this project is one that the city 
has that will uh, try to alleviate some of the congestion along 518, along with other um, thoroughfare improvements, which include uh, Bailey Road, as well as Hughes Ranch Road, which is currently under construction as additional parallel roadways to 518 to kind of get people off of that one main corridor. Um, some of you probably have already attended some of the other presentations that we've uh, given on this project uh, because the city has been working on this particular segment of the roadway for about six years now. Uh, the project itself has been on the city's thoroughfare plan for about 30 years. Uh, it's an enormous undertaking, and it has dozens of moving parts behind the scenes that have to be in place before the actual construction can start. Um, one of the major components of the um, planning is funding. Uh, the project was selected, it was submitted as one of nine Pearland projects uh, to H, I'm sorry, to HGAC, is Houston Galveston Area Council, um, back in 2012. Uh, it was selected, it was one of four Pearland projects selected in 2013 to receive federal funding. And what that is, is 80% uh, federally funded, will be federally funded, so only 20% of the total cost of the project will be borne by the, by the city itself. So the uh, current estimate for this project is a, a little under $41 million. So that means that uh, approximately $8 million is uh, directly from the city and the rest will come back to us from our tax dollars that went to Washington. Um, the project, as I said, is one of nine projects, so uh, we have several projects that address uh, not only transportation but drainage uh, that will be uh, upcoming uh, that will help with some of the mobility issues that we have. Uh, in 2013, the city commissioned Freese Nichols uh, engineering firm uh, to design the roadway. Freeze has nine sub-consultants under them that do everything from look at the traffic signals to uh, traffic control, uh, drainage, hydrology. Um, they also look at uh, surveying, uh, materials testing, acquisitions, public involvement, and environmental issues. Uh, the project will um, impact a number of property owners We've had two public meetings in the past, one in 2015 and one in 2017. The original um, uh, meeting had two alignments, and the uh, participants of the meetings uh, collectively decided that one alignment over the other. But the meetings was, were greatly attended, and we've settled on what we call the northern alignment, which is um, the current alignment that uh, was actually the one that was already in the, in the uh, thoroughfare plan. Uh, currently, there are 76 parcels that will have to be acquired before we can start this project. Uh, in addition to the acquisitions, uh, as I mentioned, uh, environmental concerns have to be addressed. So uh, wetlands mitigations uh, will have to be um, dealt with, and that kind of goes into the, uh, under the jurisdiction of the Army Corps of Engineers. The Army Corps of Engineers has been charged with managing uh, water resources through two initiatives, restoration and stewardship. Any work that impacts a navigable waterway of the United States goes through the Corps of Engineers, uh, usually for permitting. Uh, the permit application can take up to 20 months. Um, in addition to the mitigation, uh, the wetlands that we're disturbing, our project is actually only disturbing 4.3 acres of wetlands. However, um, to mitigate, we have a mitigation plan that will uh, create approximately seven acres of herbaceous wetlands in a local mitigation bank within the city. And then we're purchasing credits of uh, 0.8 acres of forest wetlands from a mitigation bank that's in Brazos Port, Texas. Uh, the proposed mitigation plan will result in an additional 3.46 acres of wetlands. Now, you may ask, what's the big deal with that? Wetlands are very important to our community, to our environment. Um, they protect and improve the water quality. They improve uh, and provide uh, fish and wildlife habitats. 
Uh, they store flood waters and maintain surface water during rain events. So uh, they're very important to our ecological system. So we try very hard, not just as a community, but as a nation to make sure that we don't you know, get rid of uh, our uh, wetlands. Uh, in addition to the uh, wetlands mitigation, we also are constructing um, detention ponds. Uh, three detention ponds are a part of this project. Collectively, the three detention ponds will um, contain a, a, approximately 57 acre feet of storm water. And just so you'll know what an acre foot is, an acre foot is about 326 gallons of water. So 57 acre feet is about a little over 18 million gallons of water will be detained in these three ponds. And that's important because uh, runoff from storm from major events used to just soak into the ground. Now that we're putting this four-lane roadway there, there's no place for them to go. So to avoid flooding the areas and impacting not only the citizens, but our, uh, our wetlands and our, our, the animals and things that are in the area, we're mitigating that by creating ponds, creating places for this water to be stored. Um, the, uh, during a storm event, the runoff will flow directly uh, into that system. Um, and it will be systematically released through uh, weirs, uh, a piping system, and different outlets so that we don't flood the area. The Mokar Road project first showed up on the city's thoroughfare plan in 1998. Um, the updated thoroughfare plan in 1993 included the conceptual alignment, as I said, is pretty well where it is now. Um, and it became a major east-west corridor for the city. In the late 1990s, the segment between State Highway 35 and Macau Road was constructed. In 2006, the segment between State Highway 35 and Pearland Parkway was completed. The segment between County I'm sorry, Country Place Boulevard and Cullen Parkway was completed in 2010. Of the most recent, a widening of a segment between FM 521 Almeda Road and State Highway 288 was completed in 2011. This final phase of the alignment is scheduled to begin around mid-year of 2020. We have construction starting as, as around April of 2020, and it is a two-year project, so uh, the, ac the actual completion date will be around mid-year uh, 2022. Uh, as I mentioned pr uh, previously, prior to the onset of that construction project, we are adding water and sewer along that corridor in anticipation of the uh, development that we know that will occur once the roadway is complete. Uh, if you want additional information, you can go to the city's website uh, under our engineering tab, and we have regular updates on the project and, and other major projects that we're working on in the, in the, the uh, capital projects group. So with that, thank you for your time, and I'll turn it back over. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Are there any questions from anyone that spoke this morning? Any questions? Well, if you are, yes, please. A few. Yes, I anticipated that question because we moved the date and moved the date. Uh, as I said, the, some of the background things that are happening, uh, in particular the acquisition, has taken a lot longer than we anticipated. When we first started this uh, project, we had, I want to say it was like 91 uh, parcels that we were trying to acquire uh, six years ago. Uh, in that six-year time, uh, parcels have been subdivided, have been sold off, have been combined. Uh, so we've had to, the acquisition has taken a lot longer than we had anticipated. Um, we are about 70% uh, finished with the acquisition. So uh, to answer your question, show an answer, yes, I think that's a pretty good date. We're hoping that the acquisition is complete um, by the end of this year. 
So we're adding a little buffer room. You were, I'm actually adding about 60 days to that November date that we have for the completed acquisition. So that will put us in the first of the year. And then by the time we uh, go through the bidding process, it will be about April. So, yes, I say April is probably a pretty good date. Yes. Has it started in July yet? Uh, we start, yes. We've already um, awarded a contract uh, for the work to begin. The uh, contractor is uh, providing us with all of his uh, information, his insurance and bonding information. We're getting everything set up uh, so that he can start ordering the equipment. Uh, when he does start, there are some long lead items that he needs to start, you know, ordering beforehand, but he can't order those until after he has a contract with us. So to answer your question, we do have a contract in place. Uh, we're finalizing all of the signatures on that contract now. Once that's done, he'll start ordering and staging some of his equipment and uh, material. And you may not see him actually start tearing up stuff, um, maybe for another 45 to 60 days. I'll stand here a little longer. <laughs> Thank you. All right, well, if you were too shy to ask your questions in front of everyone, staff will be lingering around uh, for a few moments. So again, we encourage you to network and uh, meet your friendly city staff. And thank you again, uh, everyone, for your uh, attendance today and your attention. Okay. There are some hard copy flyers at the front table. And again, if you want a copy of the slides that were presented today, they are on the Community Development Department website. Thank you all, and have a good remainder of your day.